So we're out here right now trying to get down to the location where the river is. I'm in the tundra um, and have a flatbed. It's gonna be difficult to get this rig. If you guys ever lost, had a total loss in the back of the middle of nowhere, most insurance companies, they'll have you re either recover it, self-recover and reimburse you, or you could hire somebody to go recover it. But most recovery places aren't gonna go back here, especially where this vehicle's at. You guys will see what I'm talking about here in a bit. What's up guys, so uh, Austin's gonna show you guys where we're gonna be pulling the rear end out of. It's a little bit safer because the stream diverts uh, in two different directions. One a safer area and one a high uh, uh, speed area. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna get the Tundra, anchor it. We're gonna bring the vehicle here and instead of having Mikey cross the river again with a vehicle in tow, we'll set an anchor point on this side with traction and then pull that across because the Tundra with the weight distributions being on solid ground, even if it takes it a little bit in the water, which it's only a couple feet deep, um, shouldn't be a problem. Oh, that thing settled right there.
pretty wedged in, so when we tried a static line, it just wasn't budging. Uh, I couldn't get enough traction. It was definitely wedged within pretty massive rocks. So we transitioned to a dynamic uh, rope which stretches. I believe it's somewhere around 60% the level of stretch that that thing has, and it just built up enough kinetic energy to we're able to just kind of leapfrog it out of the water, as you'll see on the video, and pull it straight out. So pretty easy once we got the angles the right way, and uh, the proof is right there. Hey guys, as you can see, it's like Jeep Gladiator meets Aquaman. And the whole front of the end of this, you could probably grate gold out of this because the river's been flowing through it. But I want to show you something real quick that me and Mikey just discovered um, in this particular setup. So, oh wow. Oh, oh well, there, there goes that. So, this is aluminum. A little heat shield. And water. Um, but check this out. So this is the uh, intake manifold, obviously, for the cold air filter. But look at this. How does that make you feel? Mm. <laughs> that thing's completely filled with dirt and grime. So it's uh, an obvious indication that this Jeep is completely total and it's a total loss. But what I'm interested to see is after it's assessed and everything else is, is it capable of being drained, worked through, flushed, and still, you know, are the cylinders still firing? It's hit or miss. I've done this with TJs. I've done this with a couple of Jeeps in my lifetime. In fact, the TJ that I have, a 99, I bogged it out completely, sucked water. I dumped it three times, flushed it, and it started right up, and I've still had that vehicle. I've had it for 20 years. Um, but who knows with these new engines and all the electronics that are underneath it. Another thing is we'll show you the inside, the interior. It's just as impactful. Uh, on this side, the water still leaking out of it. It's probably got, it probably had a thousand pounds of debris and water in it, but all this completely soaked to the brim. So the whole interior, when we were looking at it, was completely full up to here when Lee was in it. You could even see the cup holder as an indication of, yeah. Oh, make sure you guys check out the latest issue of Overland Journal. It's a good magazine. All right, guys, let's get it home. I can't believe that he got that over that. That was amazing. Uh, we didn't want to stop the momentum. He started moving out and he, we just told him to go and gas it because if we stop the momentum and we risk losing that traction that we already gained, we're not going to give that up. But it went really well. I'm glad everybody got safe. We're going home now. Hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world?
That just saved us like a, an hour or more. Uh, Talk it. Was Jack. Max, huh? yeah. There we go. That was awesome. So, hey, we, we our situation was we only had one of these because one fell off, off of, on the highway, uh, killed a couple people. Um, just kidding. It's a joke. Uh, but uh, what we did was we stacked two Max tracks together and this acted as the perfect setup for this. These things are rated for the weight of this vehicle. And without this, we would have been working a lot harder. We had a pulley system rigged up, but that would have took probably about 30 minutes. So this saved us a lot of time. Big shout out to Max Tracks.